Hello everybody! Hello, my name is Paul. Welcome one and all. And uh, joining me, of course, again is... Hi. Hi. Hello, Miss Hi. Welcome to my program. My name is Elizabeth. Elizabeth? Sorry. You know what's going to happen, so I'm just getting ready to put money in the jar. Look, I got a quarter all ready to go. You love me. Anyway, welcome back to uh, The Lady's Choice. W what, what happened last time? We went to a, an event with Lord Stanton. Ooh, scandalous. Who all shows as our scandalous choice of bill. No, I already said the word scandalous. You had to choose something else. By me saying scandalous, I was emphasizing the word choice. <laughs> this Cheater. is a partnership, <laughs> not a rivalry. Cheater. And we got into more scandalous situations by going down a scandalous hallway and into a scandalous alleyway. The keyword wherein here. Wherein we bumped into him in two scandalous ways. <laughs> and then we took a scandalous walk home and we parted scandalously. <laughs> and Arabella said, oh, it's nice to have fun with scandalousness as long as you're not the scandalous one. And we said, oh, Arabella. And moved on. You know what, can we just like not record this whole thing and just have you recap it like that at the end instead? <laughs> <laughs> it would be so much better. Well, okay. this game is nice. So I've already forget forgotten most of the voices I've done, so we'll just make it up as we go along. But I remember that uh, Lord was a Stanton is sort of like a cross between Bing Crosby and Southern Gentleman. The next day I have time to myself, though Arabella does not leave me be. <laughs> what an interesting read. <laughs> Just more wine. <laughs> the next day I have time to myself, though Arabella does not leave me be until I agree upon attending another get together that evening. And it's not long before the conversation once again turns to the popular topic of marriage. Popular topic. I must admit, I was rather disappointed in the failed engagement. See, I knew you couldn't forget it. It took me a second. It's like your default British lady voice. Oh dear. Not because I particularly like the man, I just hope to settle my future. But would it have been such a good idea to settle with someone you didn't even particularly like? Finger quotes. I suppose not. There seem to be few eligible men about this year, though. I heard Miss Gillespie's on the search for a wife. I would hardly call that stodgy, creepy little man marriage material. It is much different for you, though, Lady Ashbourne. You are baroness and com comfortable in your fortune. Oh, she's she's pouting. Do oh do do we think that these is two? Is it Miss Widow like twelve? I mean, we... I, well, I think we called her like fourteen in the last we one. We went but... on about how young she is and how. But I think we also think that there's an inkling that they might be. Oh, yeah, they were since, quite flirty, flirty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially mm. since um, uh, uh, General Corporal What's-His-Face is, is not Colonel in this Huxley. one. Colonel Huxley. Huxley. Yeah. Oh, Foxley. Foxley. Colonel oh, Foxley. Foxley. Foxley, Foxley, Foxley. <laughs> You'll have plenty of choice of matches, whereas someone in my position cannot afford to be so choosy. Miss Witter's voice shakes slightly at the admittance. So choosy. Arabella passes me a saddened glance, obviously feeling a little upset about the girl's situation. But a previous gloom is soon broken by a smile. Oh, what of Lord Stanton? Arabella almost chokes on her drink at the girl's <laughs> words. <laughs> and I can't help but chuckle at the reaction. Oh. <laughs> this is great A acting, folks. <laughs> shut up, shut up. Arabella, you idiot! <laughs> I really like really? the uh, the pi the pineapple use in the decor in the background there. That's a nice touch. The pineapples were exotic fruits. They were quite the symbol of high society. To have such an exotic, otherworldly fruit in your home. It's like tattooing a banana on your butt. It's like just because there's an exotic fruit doesn't mean that you should put it in permanent part of your decor, like a bar relief of a banana. No? Banana relief? <laughs> gotcha. She shakes her head and pats Miss Witter's arm. I will not take a chance on a man with such a reputation. Miss Witter suddenly leans in a little conspiratorially, and we do the same. I hear some ladies taking the chance on him, though. What do you mean? What have you heard? <laughs> oh, that's a look of guilt. 
The questions pour from my lips in a flustered mass. I like the way this is going. This is so much more interesting than the other guy because the other one is like, oh, it's fine. It's He's an, he's an officer, big deal. And this one is like, oh, he's scandalous. It's like, oh, I heard someone's dating him. It's like, oh, what did you hear? What did you hear? What did you hear? What are they saying the about him? And the last one is just like, oh, he's poor. <laughs> no. <laughs> this one he's like, he's actually he's a He's only a, a lowly captain. Ugh. They both glance at me in confusion of my sudden flurried outburst, so I clear my throat and smile. <laughs> I'm fine. Really. Well, there's, there's also a line here if you want to get to that. <laughs> I'm merely curious. <laughs> I believe you completely. <laughs> Mom saw him walking with the woman yesterday down the street. Short hair, blue dress, never takes it off. <laughs> Except, you know. Oh, mo. Oh. The lady had apparently linked her arm with him quite openly. <gasps> Not arm linking! It suddenly became obvious who that woman was, remembering my stroll back home with Lord Stanton the day before. So wait, was she worried that he was out with some other girl and that's I don't think why it she even, got all confused? I don't think it ever came up because like she was just sort of wandering down this back alley and then the guy calls her and it's like, hey, buy my stuff. And Stanton's like, no, unhand her, knave. But, no, but then when we walked home with him, we linked arms with him. They're talking about me. Yeah, duh. But they were like... But no, now that she's like, oh, she's talking about me... Makes it seem like she was worried for a minute that he was seen with some other lady and I no. got jealous. There's no, no way. Because I think that's why she was so curious. It's like, oh, what have you heard? It's like, what are they saying about me? <laughs> that's what I think. I don't think she's nervous about him like two times. Not her. anymore. She's more, cur- she's more being cautious with her own image because she uh, apparently more people saw her than she thought. Arabella's gaze slides to meet mine, but I quickly glance away. Did you all take note of the lady? Miss Witter shakes her head. She could not tell the lady as my aunt could only see them from behind. Though she could not mistake Lord Stanton. He's got quite the arse. <laughs> the arse, spelled A-R-S-E. Of course. Is there another way? He's one of the most handsome men in town, after all. From behind. She's blushing. Ooh. Yes, he certainly is that. Ahem. A nudge from Arabella's elbow curls my spreading smile. If I had a little bit more courage, I'm sure I would pursue such a match myself. <laughs> the man does not deserve such attention from respectable young women. Though she speaks to Miss Witter, I cannot help the feeling she is directing her words at me. She's scowling. What kind of future would you have with a man who is so willing to throw his fortune away? Gambling is a disease that has taken many a young man, and marriage has never been a cure for it. I cannot help but glance away, a frown pinching at my brows. Oh, Ooh, wow. I look oh, very uh, concerned. Yeah, all right, we have a choice. So Arabella's gotten a little bit PO'd at me. She's sort of, she's being a little passive-aggressive. So we don't really know enough about him to make that assumption. We shouldn't speak no, of him like No, I feel like, like we do. I think the fact that we're gossiping is the real crime here, so we shouldn't speak of him like this. Or speak like this of him. Mm, do, but do you think that's going to be like a little bit too defensive for him? And they'll be all like, hmm. No, I think the others are more defensive. I think this is more of a... Um, or just like silent resignation. No, we're not a pushover. Okay, and that's right, because we're Gryffindors in this one, right? Yes. Got it. It's unfair to talk of someone we know little of their true character. That is true, though I cannot see how his character could differ much from those who also carry his vice. I glance down at my hands in my lap, unsure how to respond to her words. But you're standing up, you don't have a lap. There's an understandable lull in the conversation due to the heavy topic. But Miss Witter is very happy with the whole situation. Everyone else is like, oh god, she's like, yay, do I see cupcakes? She's just thinking about his butt. Miss Witter shuffles on the edge of her seat, apparently not understanding the true meaning of the previous words between me and Arabella. Everybody's so unhappy now. Ah, look there, it's Miss Huxley. Oh, I've not seen her in town for years. Did you switch their accents? Wait, did I I get that backwards? Oh, I've not seen her in town for years. We must inquire how her children are before she joins in with the dancing. They stand to leave and Arabella looks back at me with a smile. Will you come, Elizabeth? I shall join you soon. Of course. I'll come when you're ready. The two of them shuffle away through the crowds to greet the other young woman. 
she's young, but she has many children. Well, you, they got some. Well, I mean, yeah, she's then. fourteen. She must have three kids by now. Bright smiles on their faces once again. Yeah, now that they're not on my presence. I remain in my seat, a sudden flurry of thoughts whirling in my head. I cannot deny the surprise at myself for feeling the need to defend Staunton. You know what? I just noticed with her portrait how absurdly giraffe-like her neck is. They all have giraffe-like necks. Really? I just noticed that. Don't you know every women's magazine photoshops women's necks to be longer? Really? Yes. I know. I figured like legs were a thing and like maybe arms necks, to a degree. But necks are a thing? I never knew that. We always that. elongate the neck. That is so weird. Is that like supposed to be regal and feminine? What right have I to say anything of him when I know him so little? Arabella may be right in her assumptions of his character. He did leave the day before to go to the gambling house, so why should I try and deny it? Oh, would you just stop thinking about it already? I let out an angered sigh at my own thoughts. Oh, God, I hate these mystery voices because I always end up doing the wrong thing. It's going to be Stanton. No, it's going to... Should I just pretend it's Stanton? Such heavy thoughts are better shared. I gasp a little at the sudden voice and turn my defined Stanton sitting behind my chair. It seemed too obvious. I ah, didn't want to believe told it. you. Old Stanton, you gave me quite the shock. Well, I did just beam in from the mothership, apparently. I apologize. I merely saw you looking so confused and wanted to offer my services, should you need to talk. I did so enjoy our conversation yesterday, after all. Blackmail. All of my sudden thoughts are washed away as I smile up at him. Oh, I've got it bad. <laughs> <laughs> this is nothing like the beginning one where you're just like, oh, maybe I'll end up with him at the end. And this one you're just like, give me your tailcoat. His attention shifts to where partners are lining up to dance before he turns to look back at me. Eh? Maybe a more energetic distraction is preferable. He gestured towards the dance floor. May I reserve this dance, Miss Shanson? Smythe, Smythe. We did not have the opportunity at the opening ball, and now we are acquainted. It should not cause too much whispering. I place my hand in his before I even realize I have done so. Uh, thank you for the offer, Lord Stanton. Still got that whipped cream on his shirt. He leads me to the dance floor, and I'm acutely aware of the gazes locked on She is us. just feeding all of this. She is not embarrassed at all. She's just like... I mean, the game it. isn't even giving us a choice. We're just like going for it. Well, you know, I mean, we're role-playing as her, but, you know, Elizabeth is her own person. Oh, and I did find out, by the way, that she does have a canonical name. I'm gonna look oh, it up. does she? Something easier for you to pronounce? Uh, yeah, but markedly less fun. <laughs> So, so apparently her, her actual name name is Lady Sophia Ingham. Ingham? Ingham. Like, Ingram would make more sense because that's like a word, but Ingham. Like Gingham. Oh, there's a, there's a description down here. I never saw that before. Daughter of a Viscount and heiress to a tidy fortune, it's not that odd that you've been accepted back into society so easily after such a long period of time away. But coming back into the world of the upper classes can be a bit of a shock. And how you deal with that is up to you. And Lord Stanton is down here. It's like, should we should we read a little bit of it and like do a possible spoiler? Yeah. No, they wouldn't spoil anything. Isaac Stanton. Oh, his name's Isaac. Ooh. Is, oh, look, look, he's gone like full <gasps> Hamilton here. Look at oh, that. Oh, he looks so miserable. He must have a dramatic moment. Lord Isaac Stanton fills the role of the eligible battler, perfectly tall, regal, handsome, and with a title to make anyone clamber for a marriage proposal. But why, then, do society shy away from him? Maybe those rumors of his fortune being spent at the card tables hold some weight after all. And there's Captain Guy Blake. And then there's Lord Lawrence Amesbury, who we haven't done yet. He's like, he's the new guy. He's the new guy in town. And what a package he's rocking. He must work for UPS. Girl with a decided feature. Decided future, not oh. feature. We're not, <laughs> we're not talking about his deck anymore. He <laughs> read it as feature. Yep, Lady Arabelle Ashbourne. Colonel, Colonel Ernest Foxley. We're getting so sidetracked here. <laughs> oh, no, Lady oh, Huntington. I miss her. I miss her. She's oh. not in this timeline. And he was like the villain Lord in the last Walter. one. Yeah, this one doesn't have a villain He so was far. great. Yeah, he was like. Oh, I love that villain. <laughs> He's like raping Wait, no, her description of Lady Thomasina's son, a.k.a. Duke Creep of Creep Street called Creepster. <laughs> he is Creep on Creepster. <laughs> oh, I also want to replay that one just so we can For some reason, again. he wants you and he wants you. Bad. <laughs> 
I miss him. The melodic tune begins and we drift closer to each other to begin the dance. I did not think you had made it to tonight's gathering. I'm sure that would have pleased many and I do like to disappoint them when I can. I give a small laugh and we split to pass around the back of another couple before meeting again. The gathering is better for you being here. I wish you'd be here sooner. Conversation has been dull without doing to arouse the gas. But okay, so these are all positive things. So it's like, I'm gonna go with the last one. It's the others seem too manipulative. All the same thing. No, the others seem sort of manipulative, and the last one just seems straightforward and honest. And you know what? I'm just gonna say it like it is. Okay, I'm down for that. I'm glad you are here. As I am now. This dance is sure to make up for whatever whispers are thrown my way. His sudden captivating smile makes my stomach flutter. The next moment, we almost forget to step away from each other for the next part of the dance, and nearly collide with the couple beside us. It's going to be a really short chapter if they're falling in love this quickly. He takes my hand, and we step close together as the dance comes to an end. Well, I think she's falling for him and playing with it and enjoying it, but she's not taking him seriously. I think she thinks this guy... No, is her not stomach is fluttering. Yeah, but she's like, this guy's not marriage material. I clearly have the hots for him, but I'm not going to marry him. That's what kind of makes I'm gonna me wonder. I'm going to have fun with him this season. I'm going to dance with him. I'm going to cause some scandal. I'm going to cause some rumors. And then I'm going to go home and come back next season and then maybe find a husband. Oh, okay. So she's not like thinking of him as a marriage material. But yeah, it's like, she's this just is like, like the best summer fling ever. Yeah, exactly. And let me just show up these stuffy folks that I don't have to play by their rules. It's just such a bizarre twist. Like, if we hadn't played the first go-through with the guy, what's-his-face, then I think I would have been able to accept this more, but she was, like, so prim and proper and everything had to be, like, just so. And this one, she's just like, yeah, let the good times roll. Well, yes, I feel like if... A lady actually acted the way we're choosing to act in society. She wouldn't be welcome back next year without being like, "Ooh, the town hussy has come back. She last summer she danced with that scandalous guy all summer, and this summer who's she gonna dance with this summer?" Mm, but how boring the season would be without. But this. I feel like she's at the point in her life where she's already sort of given up on being following that dream she was inbred to think she had to follow. It. She's just like, "Screw it." It is what it is. I don't need to get married to be happy in life. I'm just going to... I'm going to make a statement, maybe. She's like a feminist hero before her time. Aww. Still, we remain together, my body unable and not wanting to move away. I swallow hard at the realization he doesn't seem to want to either. I did not plan on coming tonight at all. Oh, my. (laughs) <laughs> Say that again. Well, he's, uh, a, I imagine like they just sort of like pulled, like they just got finished doing that like arms length thing and they just came like really close and everyone's clapping and they're just like and he's like <gasps> gazing. I did not plan on coming tonight yeah. at all. Yeah, there's like he just sort of like caught like he like locked eyes and he's like, uh, what? <laughs> it's what? Like he just came and then he's like, I did not plan on coming tonight at all. <laughs> I was like, what? I, was like, I thought you were like, you like just shocked that I was like, oh, and then they met eyes. I was like, oh, you have a romantic <laughs> song. No, but the way you were describing it was like all the things that led up to this ejaculation. And I was just like, cut out everything. Out yeah. I had to actually explain the joke to you. Yes, thank you. My family could not make it, so there seemed little point in joining. Then why are you here? You know why. I took a gamble on someone else being in attendance. And did your gamble pay off? It always does. Really? Then why do you have such a bad reputation for gambling and losing and... Ooh. Ooh. Wait, it's a line. We're so close, I fear he will hear the sudden pounding of my heart as his gaze pierces into my own. His fingers close together around mine, the contact washing from my mind, the thought that the music ended long ago. Elizabeth, they... they... there you are. (laughs) Arabella's voice suddenly makes me blink from the trance I'd found myself in. It seems to do the same for Stanton, as he quickly steps back from me and drops my hand. (laughs) Arabella comes to stand before us, a tense smile on her face. I just noticed the look on Stanton's face, his eyes are rolled up. He's like, ugh, thanks for the bucket of cold water, Ella Bella. Lord Stanton, I did not realize you were here tonight. She bobs a small cutscene, Stanton bows deeply before straightening with a bright smile. 
<laughs> oh, look at that smile. I was like, like, hey, <laughs> this is called sucking up to the friends. I was just explaining to Miss Chance and Smy Smy that it was not in my plans to do so. But I just found something drew me here regardless. He turns a smile to me, and I find I cannot help but return it. He clears his throat and looks back to Arabella. <clears throat> and uh, one has to make an appearance of these kinds of things, don't they? Not always. <laughs> wow. Not always. Is that just a way of saying... Um, Arabella's should... throwing all the shade there tonight. Is, yeah, there is She's some... just looking out for her friend. There is some drama happening here. Her bright smile is quite obviously forced, and her cutting reply makes my eyes widen. The expression on Stan's face, it looks like he's ready to pass out. His eyes are rolling back, and he's like, ah. As Arabella continues to cast an uneasy glare over the man, I realize now would be the best time to intervene. Do you think this is going to cause a rift between the, uh, R and Arabella's relationship? No. I don't think anything could really come between me and Arabella. I don't know. Thank you for the dance. Nudge her to stop. Oh, I believe Lady Steer is calling for us. We should be going. Hmm, so do you want to be polite to Stanton, or do you want it to sort of well, like... Well, I seem to be into making statements lately, so I think being polite to Stantman would not put Arabella in her place so much as be like, hey, dude, I'm cool with this guy. You need to be cool with me. Because if I think Arabella's just looking out for me, this is my way of her telling her, like, yo, friend... You don't have to. I'm cool. If I think my friend's being a judgmental bitch, is my way of being like, I'm not going to stand for that. But I'm going to give my friend the benefit of the doubt and not assume that. So I'm still going to say, thank you for the dance. Okay. Thank you for the dance, Lord Stanton. It was indeed a great distraction. He smiles at me and drops into a bow. I shall be happy to offer the duty again, whenever it should be needed. I wrap my hand into Arabella's arm and lead her away before she explodes with a comment I'm sure she'll regret. Even as we move away, I cannot help but glance back to find his attention still upon me. The ride home in the carriage is unusually quiet, Arabella doing her best to keep her opinions to herself. See, she's trying. Mmm, strained. When we arrive at home, she remains silent, though sweeps into the drawing room like a thundercloud. <laughs> I cannot help but smile at her, knowing how much she cares, but also how much she wants to interfere. Not that there should be anything for her to interfere with. Okay, yeah, I, I agree with that statement. You have been smiling since we left the hall, Elizabeth. Then you should not make me do so with your obvious need to voice your thoughts. Was that shady? Or am I reading too much into that? Arabella's saying you're smiling and I don't want you to be smiling? Or she's smiling like, oh, you're happy. I think Arabella's comment... She's like saying, it's like, you got something to say. Why don't you just say it? Yeah, like, and I'm smirking at you because you clearly have a problem. Got something to say, name a time and place, face to face. I have the We're honor besties. to be your obedient servant. Elizabeth, smile, smile. You fool yourself if you think that is the reason you smile. What else could it be? I certainly cannot begin to think. The dance, maybe? With a certain gentleman? It was only a dance, Arabella. And yesterday, it was only a walk. You worry far more than you should. I worry more than enough for you. She steps closer to me, taking my hands in hers. I would have little true family if I did not have you. So I think she's worried about oh. her. She's worried about herself. No. Oh, whoa, whoa, look at that. That doesn't mean you can tell me how to live. That's too much. Yeah, and but we aren't family. That's too much. That's also... I feel the same about you. Care for more than you, but I don't Okay, so it's got to be one of these two. Yeah, these top are the ones. one, I think. Yeah. The, top the other one. ones are just like, bitch. That's like, yeah, you're like... And she's like reaching out to me. I'm not going to reject yeah, that. Yeah, that's like you're going to oh, swat geez. down the hand of friendship. It's aching for a fight at that point. Yeah. I know, Arabella, and I feel the same about you. I smile, hoping to ease her frown. But I'm quite old enough to decide how to live my own life, am I not? With her laugh, the tension begins to ease. She takes her hands from mine and nods. I suppose you're right. Did we not have this conversation once about Rupert? I believe so. Though we were much younger then, and it was I trying to dissuade you. We were young, weren't we? What happened to us? It was like three weeks ago. 
Her smile falters a little as painful memories obviously creep to her mind. Sh sh charades, everyone. Charades. You truly loved him, didn't you? Oh, we're talking about her... Oh, did her boyfriend die in this one? No, or? her husband is dead. Oh. And now she's she was about to marry someone else, and then that didn't work out mysteriously and randomly. Oh, got it. So now she's single again. I did not think to fall in love as much as I did. It was a foolish young fancy at the beginning, after all. But to fall for a scoundrel is the most hellish of things, Elizabeth. I, I cannot recommend it. Suddenly I understand why she is so intent on my behalf. Oh, so her ex-boyfriend was a scoundrel? Husband. Rupert was not an ideal husband, even if their affections were true. I thought being older would give us more freedom of choosing our lives. I only wish you to be happy, Elizabeth, and secure. I know. And I have little to do now but interfere in your life and have little to do in my own. We should retire for the evening. I would very much like to take a walk in the park in the morning. And the earlier we are, the more people we shall meet. Oh, we know what happens in the park. Yeah, all the stuff goes down in the park. I nod at her and we move towards the door where she suddenly pauses and glances over her shoulder at me. You coming, Wink? May I ask? She frowns before continuing. Is there truly something between you and Stanton? I should not deny that I hope there is. I barely know myself. My business. I think the middle one. Mm, I'm not gonna yeah, be like, I agree with mind that. Mind your own business. Yeah, like, it's like Nanya. To be honest, I barely know myself. The heart is often the hardest thing to know or to predict. I suppose all we can do is follow it where we wish to. After that, we head to bed, my head swimming with thoughts heavier than before. The next morning, we take the walk Arabella was looking forward to. With the sun to warm us, I find I am enjoying the outing far more than expected. Oh good, you found your bucket again. I'm glad. Even when we are stopped every few feet in order to greet and talk with people. But it's not until we bump into a familiar figure that Arabella truly lights oh, up. Oh, tell me it's Foxley. <gasps> oh, is he back? Yeah. Oh, God, a Foxley. What a, what a surprise to meet you here. That's why she wanted to go to the park. Ah, Lady Ashbourne. Miss Shanson Smythe Smythe. We cut see as he gives a joyful bow. Woo. What did I tell you before, Colonel? I apologize, Arabella. As the man says her name, I can feel Arabella almost vibrate with happiness. Oh, so they end up me. they end up together in like every story. That's so Aww. cute. We didn't have to date his friend after all. Yeah, I know. We're gonna just <laughs> let it be. We're gonna date the guy we really wanted to in the first place. I thought the military were only supposed to be stationed in Bath for a few days. I have stayed behind with a couple of men to negotiate obtaining permanent residence for officers. Many of them wish for better society than only that of their fellow soldiers. As the conversation continues, Arabella gradually drifts closer to Colonel Foxley. Eventually, I am left to walk behind as the two continue on, Arabella's hand sliding gently around the Colonel's arm. I watch them with a smile, pleased to see Arabella so happy. Not wishing to disturb their talk, I decided best to walk down a side path alone. Oh, well, let me guess. She's going to end up on the wrong side of the park and get, like, saved by Stanton. <laughs> Who knew there was a bad side of the oh, park? Oh, no. Oh, you know, the bad pigeons are, like, holding <laughs> knives to her. After meandering through the park, inspired by the colorful blooms and the grace of the bushes around me. <laughs> <laughs> the bushes. Indeed. You let your accent get a little out of control. <laughs> Fun of me. The bushes? Make <laughs> funny all I want for that one. They're just bushes. <laughs> oh dear. What happens if you push the bushes? <laughs> Do you find a secret passage if you push the bush? After meandering through. <laughs> <laughs> We're never gonna get this line out now. After meandering through the park, inspired by the colorful blooms that grease. <laughs> <laughs> After meandering through the park, inspired by the colorful blooms that grease the bushes around me, I start when I hear a sudden angered yell. I'm not in this business for free. A man's voice interrupts the gentle solitude and I give a deep frown as I make my way to the edge of the main park towards it. 
I come to the edge of the park to see a carriage driver yelling at a young woman hiding a boy, who can, who I can only assume is her son, behind her. Please, sir, I did not know the fare would be so much. It ain't my problem, I drove you here. I want my full payment. You said it would cost... It costs as much as it costs now. I can give you everything I have. She holds up a small coin purse, which the carriage driver rips from her hands. Well, what else you got? His yelling attracts the attention of everyone nearby, and the woman looks on the verge of tears, glancing back in mortification at her son. The man is obviously trying to fleece the woman. I almost burst with rage right there. I stride towards them, my sudden presence at their side making them both look towards me. What do you want? This ain't none of your business. Okay. Alright, so let's we'll, we'll stop at this one. Because we got to figure out which one will... Because you know Stan's going to stop in at some point and put it into all this. Because he doesn't care. Uh, Stan don't give a shit. Um, so, like, the logical thing I think to do would be to pay the man, so I'm not going to do that. Okay. I am I could be really saucy and say, Oh, you're being so generous, sir, by letting these people off with not paying. Or I could be like, You are rude and you don't deserve payment. My bet is no matter what we choose, Stanton's going to come up and save the day somehow. Because so Stanton don't give no I'll shits. try to be like saucy then. I'll take the first one. That seems risky to me. I'll be your, like, Your oh, generosity oh. at not paying full payment is such a kindness? Yeah. Oh, I see. That was a little kind of passive aggressive in a way. Mm -hmm. he's, he's, I don't think he's going to fall for it. It's kind of, he's kind of rough. How kind you are, sir, to deliver this lady without needing full payment! I announced to the whole park at large so he would have to agree to that. In an Irish accent somehow. <laughs> well, I'm not being me. <laughs> I smile sweetly at the man who eyes me carefully. That's not... I rarely see such generosity in people these days. It truly is enough to fill my heart. His mouth twitches in half annoyance and half uncertainty. Then with a loud sigh, he sits back in his seat. The carriage rattles away, the creaky wheels sounding the man's obvious frustration as he leaves. There are not enough words to express my thanks. To have that man gone is thanks enough. She gives a small smile, and she does the boy behind her peeks around her skirt. Forgive me, I haven't introduced myself. She dips into a curtsy. I'm Miss Mabel Downing. She reaches behind her to pull the boy out in front of her. Zip. <laughs> and this is my son, Hugh. I drop into a curtsy myself. I'm Miss Elizabeth Shanson Smythe. Miss Shanson Smythe. The sound of Colonel Foxley's voice echoes from behind me, and I turn to find him and Arabella rushing towards us. We heard raised voices and could not find you. Are you all right? Yes, quite fine. Your friend has been most generous in her actions. Oh, I do not doubt it. She is with the best of people. Lady Arabella Ashbourne and Colonel Foxley, this is Miss Mabel Downing and her son Hugh Downing. They exchange bows and curtsies before smiles replace the formality. If you'll allow it, I wish to thank you properly. Would you come to tea tomorrow? Oh, that would be delightful. We always enjoy making new friends. Wow, this poor woman who can't even afford a carriage driver, Arabelle's like, I'm inviting myself too! Well, I think she tea invited everybody. All. She couldn't just like invite us to tea at this point. It's like, oh, uh, well, I guess you're all are coming. She doesn't even have enough money to pay a carriage driver. How can we, like, inconvenience her like this? Oh. Arabella grins and answers before I have the chance. I'm most pleased to hear it. The woman reaches into her bag, pulling out a small calling card and handing it to us. Until tomorrow, then. After curtsies and bows have been made again, Miss Downing and her son head off toward the street at a hurried pace. Some fishy. I can't put my finger on it, but there's something They're going to be related to Stan somehow or something. You think so? Hmm. Oh, you right think it might be a scam? Mm. Like it was all staged for us to come in and yeah, be It seems like, really overly complicated if we have to go meet her for tea in order to sort of further the, the, the swindle, as it were. So no, I don't think it's a scam, but I don't know, I don't know. What a sweet young woman. Have you heard of her, Arabella? Her husband, yes, but not of her. He was involved in an accident some years back. It caused quite a commotion, though I barely remember why. He never recovered from it. I did not know he left behind a widow. We watch mother and son disappear around the corner. 
I suppose it is time for us to head back as well. I, I need to organize with Johnson if we are to be out tomorrow afternoon. Why is she organizing with my butler? I'm the lady of the house. Shouldn't I be doing the organizing? Well, I think they like live together in the same house, so I guess they're yeah, all... Yeah, but why is Arabella doing the lady of the house things? No, like they work for everybody in the house. It doesn't matter who owns yeah, But why house. is she organizing with Johnson? I, I don't know be Regency doing the Law. She's, she's acting like it's her house. I'm just saying. So she has control of the Johnson? She turns the Foxley and smiles brightly. Until next time, Arabella. Oh, look at that blush. Aww. Yes, until next time, Colonel. I can make, wait, he can call her Arabella, but he can't call him a... Maybe it's like a kink thing. What's, what's his first name? Did it say what his first name was? Ernest. Ernest? Oh, that's right, Ernest. The two gaze at each other for a long moment, and suddenly I feel a little awkward standing beside them. Though I doubt they've remembered my presence at all. Eventually, Colonel Foxley glances at me, his eyes widening in embarrassment. Uh, and, uh, of course, you too, Miss Jansen Smythe Smythe. He gives a nervous <laughs> laugh. It was good to see you again, Colonel. He gives a final bow before turning and heading away with a rather happy gait. He's skipping. I turn my gaze to Arabella, the woman watching the Colonel closely as he goes. All right, so do we want to get saucy and say, oh, and you're worried about me, Arabella, and you're going after a colonel, or do we want to be supportive? Oh, is going after a military man like, supposed to be, like, scandalous, or is, ours, is the military, like, I think it has more to do with society. Arabella's hypocrisy, and, us, like, our relationship with our friend is probably the most important thing right now, not our romances. Well, he's a colonel. Isn't colonel, like, the next step below, like, president? Yeah, but she's, like... A duchess or something. No, she's a bar oh, she's a baroness. That's weird. what she is. Yeah. So I don't know. Um, she also wears buckets. Yeah, she is a bucket head. Um, and that may mean something in society. So the question is, what the fact that she wears a bucket on her head? How do we treat our friendship with Arabella? Because right now, that's the most important relationship we have going on, and the thing that needs to be saved throughout this whole thing. And we can't let men. Get in the way with us. All right, so this will give us a sort of a nice dramatic pause, I suppose, in the action. So we kind of find out if Arabella's like, oh, is she all over the colonel? Or uh, is, uh, just so we just sort of, because I don't want to cause any kind of rift between Arabella and ourselves. But we also want to be true to ourselves, too. Like, that how do true. we really feel about the fact that she's all Twitter painted over Colonel Foxley, but she's judging us for just a little dance with Lord Stan? That is true. All right, so we'll pick that one up again next time. We'll see what the true feelings are. And then, actually, but I think this is actually more Arabella's chapter than it was Stanton's chapter. Well, she's our Biffle. Yeah, she is awesome. Okay, so we'll see you guys next time. We'll pick it up, and then we'll see if uh, uh, where things progress with Stanton. So until then, good night, Jelly Beans. Good night. Good night.